Hey everybody, we're going to do a quick follow-up video to the one I did earlier in the week about that leaked photo, possibly an upgrade to Logic Pro coming very soon with a bunch of new features. But today we're going to focus on the existing features inside GarageBand, the iOS. So we're going to be pulling out the iPad Pro here and looking at the Live Loops feature and the effects, the master effects. So let's dive right into this. I'm excited Maybe if this comes to Logic, I don't know how much I'm going to personally use it, but I love when they take features that are maturing on other platforms and bring them into Logic. So I hope that this is something that's a good thing for Logic. We all hope that all the existing bugs and things that we don't like about Logic change and effects and instruments get updated. But as we saw just this week with things like iWork with Pages and Keynote, they went from version 8 and they skipped to version 10. You know, this could be one of those big updates for Logic. If they're going to change some of the real core features of this, we could be seeing a major update. Or we could just be seeing some GarageBand stuff coming into it. Either way, let's talk about some of the features that it appears are going to come to Logic with this update. Okay, so here we are in GarageBand for iOS. I've just initiated a new project at the top I can choose between live loops or tracks and we're going to do live loops. We have three pages, well two pages and a couple of different templates and these come with a variety of styles so we could come through and do flex and flow for instance and it loads up with content already in there. You can create your own from scratch, too. This isn't something that's limited to just these different options. And now we have our main interface. So let's just play a little bit of this project. And it just keeps on going. We can also do individual triggers by clicking on. And so we can do pieces from each of the different columns. We can't do more than one from a horizontal row. And that's because each of those are triggering the same basic instrument. So we can go look at the instruments here. And so we do have access to anything Vertically, they can go from any of the different vertical columns, but horizontal rows, those can only be one at a time from each one. So what do we do with it, with this afterwards? So let's actually do a performance while we, where we record it. Okay, so I stopped it. We're going to go into our other mode up here. And this is what was just recorded into our project. And so it's actually recording all of the output from everything we did into tracks. So that looks a lot like that screenshot where there's the two views. One of them was this grid view and the other had tracks in it. So very similar to what that was. There's a lot more to it though than what we've actually shown so far. So for instance, 
I can come into any of these. The green ones are MIDI. Let's go down to the bottom left hand corner is our edit mode. So let's edit this. And then it works like GarageBand does for most of this, where I can come in now and edit all the stuff in that loop. Click done, click done, and then it's out there. I can also copy this and paste. I can also come out to some of these other instruments that are MIDI. For instance, we'll record into cell. And now we have, let's close that down. Now we have that. And you saw that little optimizing performance window come up. What happens is every time you're doing this stuff, it records it into a little audio file and is able to offload the resources. So even though it looks like a MIDI file, it's actually being essentially frozen into the track. We have all of our other things here. We have quantization, time snapping, velocity control, but let's go out of edit mode. This is what I just recorded. I'm using one hand because I've got the other hand holding the iPad. And now we can move this around and do other things with it. So we can actually create all of our tracks that we want. In addition to that, we have access to all of the Apple loops, which get installed here. So we have over 5,000. And then if we were on full logic, we'd have over 20,000. So a lot of content here to be able to create complex arrangements and do that. What's the benefit to this? I mean, what's the point? Well, first of all, one of the main points is that this is great for performance. It means we can take this and perform st on stage or uh, at a concert hall or whatever. You can have access to all of this stuff in a very easy format. Second thing is, you could do this in the studio to create arrangements of your songs. So you could actually take all the building blocks and perform the arrangement instead of just arranging it. There's a few other really cool things with this. Uh, let's come down here. So we have all the normal stuff with this. Let's do edit mode again for a second. Let's just pick one of these settings for that. I want to change this to, for instance, 16th notes if I wanted it. So I can change the time snap for it. We can change the speed of it. Follow tempo and pitch, looping, that's all great. Play, stop. So I want to play when pressed. Out of edit mode. So I can actually come through and create a bunch of these that are triggered in different ways. We can put an entire melody with one note in each box and play this like a keyboard. So there's a lot of flexibility in those control parameters. The last thing that it looks like we're getting possibly is the effects area. And this is pretty exciting too. We have the ability to change what are on these two pads between filter, wobble, orbit, repeater, reverb, delay. The defaults in this case are filter and repeater. So let's push play on the beginning. And we can, in the case of the iPad and the phone, 
Put this so that if, as you move the iPad around, it does the filter. I'm not using my finger anymore. Okay, so some of those sound better than others, but I definitely think there's a lot of possibility here for doing some really cool things with this. There's also some possibility to come up with some really horrible sounding things in this too. But this is what we have with this and that part of it is, is interesting for performance. Now in a previous video I showed that if you're adding this onto a GarageBand project and importing that into Logic Pro, that the whole effects plugin is actually there. It's already in Logic. It just doesn't have an interface or the ability to really do a lot of control. You can automate some things, but that's about it. So it's already available there. It's not like this is a far stretch to add it, but they're gonna to have to reprogram the whole Logic Control app to give us that interface to be able to still have the touch portion of this because so much of this relies on having the interactive, the tactile experience and being able to make those changes not with a mouse. So a mouse could do this, but it's really not gonna be the ideal way to do it. Okay. I think, I think that that's about it for this. I think that we're, I mean, there's probably more details and stuff to this that we haven't talked about, but I think for the most part, this is a, an overview of what's available here. So I think it's pretty cool that we have a lot of these features possibly coming. The last thing I will say as we add a new instrument here, is that we have things like the sampler here, which allow us to record from a microphone and then map it across the keyboard so easily. It's not as elegant or powerful as Simpler and Ableton, but the ideas are all there. So we can do a lot of control and things. We can import files as well. I mean, the full thing is here, so that's pretty cool. And it's, it's pretty nice having so much of this stuff to be able to use. There we go, so we have a whole sampler in here. We can change the tuning of things. Okay, so. Yeah, let's do that. Just a lot of really cool tools here. And I hope we actually get some of the other smart instruments from here into Logic. Some of those are really useful as well. There's just a lot of cool things that are being developed in the iOS format that would really benefit Logic if they were to move in there. Not everything, some of the stuff is a little bit more rudimentary or simple, but I think there's so much useful stuff here that would be really great to have in the pro environment. Okay, we're gonna stop the video here. Hope you enjoyed this quick look at the live loop section inside GarageBand iOS, knowing that we may be getting it in the full version of Logic coming up really soon.